Hello, I'm Chris. I'm one of the Bio321 TAs, and I wanted to talk to you today about keeping a laboratory notebook for your experiment. I wanted to begin by showing you my notebook. It has a few different projects in here. Um, and the first few pages of my notebook, I'll show you, I've put them out. The first one has a physical layout of my experiment. Uh, the second page actually has my statistical layout of my experiment. And the last page has, uh, the third page rather, has um, my hypotheses and some results that I expect to see. So I wanted to show you that just to uh, let you know that when you do research, uh, this is a practice that you need to do. And it's not just something that we make you do um, for grade or for busy work, but um, a lot of researchers, pretty much every researcher I know, writes down all their notes in a notebook. And you'll find, if you, if you keep a really good notebook, that um, when you go to write your methods, it'll be much easier. All right, so let's begin. How do you begin your notebook? Well, let's first start with an example of a two-way design. Let's say I had uh, one factor, nitrogen, uh, three levels, one factor, uh, phosphorus, three levels as well. And I wanted to study Brassica rapa. All right, so how do these two factors potentially interact? Does the effect of one factor on the growth of Brassica rapa depend on the other? Those would be kind of my questions in this experiment. So the first thing I would write down, page one, would be my research question. Does the effect of nitrogen on the growth of Brassica rapa depend on the level of phosphorus? Okay. So that would be the first thing I wrote down, my research question, page one. All right, And then right below that, I would write down my statistical design. Okay, so this is a two-way design. We have one factor on one side, one factor on the other. We have all the levels here, and we have all of the replicates. So you can just look at this design and know uh, what type of an experiment you're doing right away. So this is something that's handy to have. Um, so that would be the second thing that I would write in my notebook. Okay, so moving on, that would probably take up a page. So getting to page two, I would just write down the things that I'm planning to measure. All right, so biomass, length of longest leaf, spad, plant height. These are things that I would measure, but your uh, dependent variables may be different than mine. So write down a list of your dependent variables and how you plan to actually measure them. The next thing I'd write down is how are you going to deliver your treatments, OK? Um, and in this case, where we have something that we're applying to our plants um, in, in a solution, I would actually write down the formulas that I plan to use. So something like nitrogen, if you wanted to make a stock solution that you could dilute later on and use for your plant watering, I would write down the actual formula for my stock solution. Okay. So yours is obviously going to be different. You're going to have to do all the math to figure out what your solutions are going to be. But um, And then if you have a stock solution like this, I'd write down the dilution factor as well. So um, how do you get to your actual treatments? Our treatments for nitrogen were 0, 30, and 15. So for 30, I'd write down how I got to 30 from my stock. And for 15, I'd do the same thing. Now, obviously, I didn't write down 0 here, but it's basically no nitrogen. So it's just distilled water. So whatever way that you treat your plants, you may not have a solution that you're doing. You may have something like UV. Uh, you want to write down how you um, apply that treatment. So in the instance that you would be using UV, how high off the ground are you putting your plants? What level of UV intensity does that represent? You want to have these things on, on page two. So page three, I would begin with the physical setup, OK? And this is something where I'd start writing the date, OK? You want to start writing the date now to begin your experiment, all right? So let's say I began mine on February 25th, 2014. And I would write. Um, exactly everything that I did to start my experiment. So for instance, in my um, example, I placed 90 3 by 3 by 3, excuse me, 3 by 3 by 5 centimeter foam cell pots on a table in greenhouse 2, filled each planter with ProMix BX, leaving one centimeter of space to the rim, and planted three brassica rapa seeds in each pot at a depth of one centimeter. So that's a general physical setup and you notice that this actually kind of looks a lot like what you would write in a method section. And it turns out that um, really when you go to write your method section, if you take really good notes in your notebook like this, you can 
very, very easily write your methods. So it's a, it's a handy thing um, in a couple months from now when you go to write that. So after page three, your, your initial setup, you've written down all your treatments, all your dependent variables, and how you're going to set up your experiment. Um, probably around page four, you'll just have a log. You'll start logging in everything that you do in your experiment. Um, so let's say I began on February 27th and I watered my plants to saturation, the soil saturation, with my treatment solution. All right, and then I came back on March 1st. I did the same thing. I watered my plants, but I noticed something this time. So all plants at 30 parts per million nitrogen treatment have germinated, and only four plants in the 15 parts per million nitrogen have germinated, and none in the zero parts per million have germinated. Now, if you recall from our dependent variables at the beginning, I was not planning on measuring germination, but when I walk into the greenhouse and see something like this, um, it's an interesting uh, phenomenon here. I would write this down, all right? So even if you weren't planning on writing this down or looking at germination at all, this is something that later on, you know, you have another dependent variable that you can measure right here that you weren't even expecting. And it might be turn out to be the most interesting thing that you have to measure out of out of all of the dependent variables that you measure. So this is an example of writing things down and observing things. You know, the whole point of science is to observe. So the more things that you write down, uh, the better. And you'll you'll thank yourself later on when you have very interesting results that you didn't even think would happen. All right, so I go back in in March 3rd. I water, again, my plants with my treatment solution. And I notice that now all the plants uh, have germinated. There are seedlings in each pot. But I notice also that the triad adjacent to me, triad 31, their shade cloth is partially shading my experiment. And I'm a little concerned about that because um, not all of my plants are not all receiving the same amount of light now. So I kind of went home that night and I thought about what I could do. And I came back the next morning, uh, excuse me, two mornings from then, and March 5th, I watered my plants. And then I randomly moved my plants to new places because I knew that the shade cloth would introduce another factor in my experiment. So I wanted to randomize my plants in space um, to counteract that shading that my, my, my neighbor triad was doing. Okay, So this is something that um, will come up, you know, and if you write it down, you can kind of talk to your other teammates about it or talk to a TA or um, um, greenhouse manager, Carol, about And you can come up with a plan to, to help it. And when you do that, you want to write that down in your book. So these are instances that the more you write down, um, the better ex your experiment is actually going to be. Okay? So I went through my experiment. I logged all the treatments that I did all, every time that I water, um, all, all the other observations. Maybe I observed that um, the plants ended up flowering at different times, things like that. So I wrote down those things, and I got to my final day, April 4th. Um, I measured all of my variables. Now, this is a point where you can use your lab notebook now to write down your actual data from your experiment. So you can say, well, today, April 4th, we measured the height and longest leaf of all of our plants, we measured the spad on the longest leaf, harvested, separated root from shoot, and placed in 75 degree oven to dry. And right below that, I would just use my notebook as a place to store my data, okay? So once you do that, you can take your data right into Excel and analyze it. Um, using SAS Jump, and then you can use your lab notebook to write your methods section. And that is the beauty of having a really well uh, documented experiment. So I hope this works out. I hope this was a good um, tutorial for you. And um, I look forward to seeing you writing in your lab notebooks. And I hope your experiment goes very well. Thanks very much.